welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Legacy, and at the request of Patreon subscriber Heinz, I am doing a dealer's choice, playing whatever I want, and what I want to do is explore more Infinity cards that are available on Magic Online now, and today's target is Ambigan. A single green mana instant combat trick. Until end of turn, target non-brushwag creature gets plus one plus one for each super type, card type, and subtype it has. First of all, the joke here is... Obviously, this is a one-shot kill with any changeling, so they had to pick a way to not give a changeling plus whatever plus whatever, or whatever is the number of creature types that exist. And Brushwag is the funniest, so that's what that text is about. As far as real creatures with actual defined creature types go, Glistener Elf is a creature, that's one. A Phyrexian, that's two. An Elf, that's three. And a Warrior, that's four. Plus four, plus four for a single green on this thing, pretty good deal. Bladed Agent, same thing. Creature, Phyrexian, Human, Rogue, plus four, plus four. Ink Moth Nexus, buckle up for this. It's a Phyrexian Blink Moth Artifact Creature Land. So that's plus five. This one is a land on top of all the other things and an artifact. Embiggen gets you halfway there or better on any infect creature. This is the obvious home for a super compact pump spell like this. Also in the deck, is an exciting new card, Royal Treatment, from Wilds of Eldraine. Target creature control gains hexproof until end of turn. Create a Royal Roll token attached to that creature. A Royal Roll gives the enchanted creature plus one, plus one, and ward one. Which means it protects it now, it pumps it forever, and it protects it a little bit forever after this. Very cool card to have in an infect deck. And of course, the goal of this is to deal 10 damage with a source of infect, Blooded Agent unblockable, Glistener Elf blockable but cheap, Egg Mob Nexus can fly and hides among your mana base. Just get one of these things into the red zone, give it 10 power, or give it 5 power twice, or you know, whatever. It can happen over multiple turns. Hit somebody for 2 poison a turn for 5 turns, that gets it done too. Invigorate is the backbone of this thing. If you control a forest, you can cast a spell for free and let your opponent gain 3 life, but we don't care about life here. Target creature gets plus 4, plus 4. This gets you halfway to Infect for no mana, and we don't care about their life total. Berserk, double target creature's power. It gets Trample. It dies at the end of combat. Or at the end of turn. My bad. All right, yeah, it dies later. But the point is, hopefully the opponent's dead before that matters. Embiggen, Invigorate, some Noble Hierarch triggers. Once something gets to 5 power, you get to blast people with Berserk, and the Trample's really important as well. All of this backed up with Force of Will and Days. There was a time, probably 8 to 10 years ago, where Infect was genuinely a number one deck in Legacy. We've kind of chilled off of those times. But the deck still exists, there are still diehards out there, and I like to showcase it from time to time. A very cool thing in this deck is Lorien Revealed. Which, Lorien Revealed, even in decks that are unlikely to cast it, it's a blue card for Force of Will. That also occupies kind of a land slot, kind of a spell slot. There's a lot of decks that couldn't support Force of Will before or didn't support it very well that can now just support it easily while hitting their land drops in low land count decks. It's a very cool piece of deck building here. And sometimes you play against someone who just has three swords of plowshares and the game goes long. It would be nice to draw three cards against those decks. So here we are. This is Embiggen Infect. Let's get after it. Welcome to Taking the Initiative for Trans Lifeline, hosted by myself and a group of your favorite magic content creators. Trans Heart October is an annual drive where gamers and streamers from around the world work together to support Trans Lifeline. Trans Lifeline is the nation's only crisis and peer support hotline staffed by trans people for trans people. 2023 has been a year of unprecedented anti-trans legislation, violent rhetoric, and other attacks on the basic rights of some of our most vulnerable community members. Every $2 you donate during this campaign is a raffle entry. Every $500 collected overall adds another prize to the raffle. We have secret lairs, cool stuff ink gift cards, full boxes, and almost 20 commander decks to give away. 
Use the link or QR code to get in the mix for great prizes while supporting an important cause. Entries are accepted October 16th through 20th, 2023. Donations must include name and address to be eligible for prizes. I'm on the draw in round one with a hand that's not exactly blazing. This Pajuka Bog is supposed to be part of the crop rotation package. You basically never want to draw this card. The ways that I can think about this hand are, I have mana acceleration, card selection, protection, and a threat, because crop rotation can get Ink Moth Nexus. Or I can think about it as a six card hand that doesn't present a threat. And you know me, I err on the side of Island Ponder Keep. I'm going to try it. Cavern of Souls, fascinating. Goblin. Well, we're in trouble. We might be dead already. I played the Mind Goblin Stompy deck on the channel last week to an easy 5-0. Okay, War Marshal. They're investing in the future. This is a deck that's going to have blockers, unfortunately. Boy, do I hate blockers. I'm going to fetch here. I think this game's going to go fast, and generally I like to save fetches for ponders, but I would rather just... uh. Get that land out of my way for now. And I found an Invigorate in the meantime here. They're going pretty deep here. This is a lot of Chrome Moxes. If they play Mind Goblin... Alright, y'all. I can't daze anything that comes out of the cavern. But if they play, like, Name Sticker Goblin, Mind Goblin, Guacamole Goblin, whatever you want to call it, and then cast something else with the other mana, I can daze that card. Ooh, B-Storm. Immediately punished for using my fetch land, but Brainstorm rules here. I'm going to put back Bajuka Bog, and I don't think I want this Caracas. And then I can use Lorien Revealed to shuffle and then cast Ponder, or I can Crop Rotate to shuffle and then cast Ponder. I can also just cast Ponder and not do anything. I would rather get the shuffle, though. Though I would rather surprise them, surprise death. If they see the, the Crop Rotation, that could be trouble. I am going to Ponder, actually. Shuffle this. I'm looking for a Berserk. E-Storm. All right. That's the turn with Crop Rotation available. They have four damage here. This is functionally six mana for Goblins. And a second Cavern's really annoying. Battlecry Goblin that they can activate once. It's a hearty chunk of damage. So this is going to be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right. Well, I need another Invigorate. A end step. Crop rotation, get an Ink Moth Nexus, and another Invigorate, a Berserk. Crop rotation doesn't do it. And right, now I need to brainstorm into Invigorate or Land Plus Pump Spell. Let's go. Hey, Invigorate. Welcome to the Poison House. Put back two things that aren't days. Fire up my homie. Attack, get an Exalted Trigger, and you can gain three life. You can gain three life. Pew pew. Poison stuff. Good shit. Playing against goblins. Chill is a hilarious cyborg card. Rest spells cost two more to cast. They don't build them like this anymore. Yeah, we got Wilt. Probably not interested. Force of Vigor. Probably not interested. Blue Blast. I am interested. Pongify. I could, I could see an argument. This deck might bring in stuff like Chalice of the Void or Trinisphere. They are a Stompy deck. We saw Chrome Moxes in there. There's like classic goblins, like Wasteland, Rashad, and Port Goblin Lackey. And then there's full combo Mind Goblin stuff. This one appears to be somewhere in the middle. I don't think I'm trying to graph Digger's Cage here. Chill, Blue Blast, Pongify, Force of Vigor. I can just shave all my dazes. So daze is good against those prison pieces. I want every creature and every pump spell. Wow, there's only one Ponder in the deck? I didn't even notice that. I kept on Island Ponder Keep when there's only one. Wash and Roll lore continues to grow. I actually do think Days looks like the worst card here. I don't actually need Bajuka Bog in the matchup. I could get a Days back. Cutting a land, air quotes, is sometimes risky, but it's only, not really a land. I could sidegrade it into Besaju. That's a land that also interacts with prison pieces if I need to do that. Okay. Yeah, I'm back into Besaju. Sorry, Days. You're out of here. Let's go. Yeah, they could have Furies or Pyrokinesis, that sort of thing in the post-board games. There is one basic forest in here if they try to Blood Moon me. Sick. I like this hand. I'm going to keep it. It's got a Blighted Agent and a Protection spell for it. 
And then we got to figure out the rest of the game. This looks like a chalice. Sure is. Okay. Well, I won't be noble hierarching anytime soon, but I do still have blighted agent who can rock out. There is not a basic island. Matron, you got it. Moxus, just right in the hand. I'm in check. Island cycle, get a drop. Drop, play the blighted agent. Hope they don't have a removal spell. Pendlehaven can pump blighted agent, but nothing else in my hand actually works. There's the mine goblin. And it made four, so that's the low roll. Alright, that's only five. They're not at Moxus yet. If they have another goblin. Okay, cool. This is a bunch of damage, but it's not a Muxus. Okay, I'm taking a million. I'm at 11. Dead on board. If I don't get something together here. Yeah, this chalice got me beat. I'm not going to be able to come back from this in time. All right, next one. Wilt. Maybe back on the menu. I said I probably didn't want that, but then I boarded in Beseju. So maybe I do want that the whole time. How do I mitigate my pain versus Chalice of the Void? And Lorien Revealed is not a high impact card. It is blue for force, but I think I can live without one of them. I did just die with two of them in my opening hand. Keep. Okay. Snap keep this. I do have to get a tropical island because I'd like to cast chill next turn and invigorate only works if you have a forest. So you can't pendle haven and then invigorate. And if they fury here, I can just save my guy. Play the control role. Skirk Prospector, scary card. You got it. Pendlehaven is dope because it functionally makes Glistener Elf unblockable. Oh, so does Noble Hierarch. Nice. But I'd really like to have chill in play right now. Encourage my opponent to chill. Okay, they're making the block. Sure. I'll just eat your thing for free and we can chill next turn. Like, I would understand that block if I had to actually spend a pump spell from my hand, but spewing on the Pendlehaven kind of. Whack. Ooh, another Noble Hierarch. I was going to play Ink Moth this turn. Oh, I have no Noble Hierarch in play. Right. I forgot that taps for mana briefly. Busted. I was like, it's just a pump spell. Don't worry about it. A Noble Hierarch. Oh, I probably should have led on Chill. If they have Pyrotechnics here, or Pyrokinesis, Pyrokinesis. I always get that one wrong. Pyrokinesis, three for wanting me is pretty unfortunate. Okay, Ink Moth Nexus and play Chill. I should have done this before the Noble Hierarch. This is just an extra thing. Unpunished, but yuck. They can't stop my Glistener Elf with what they have anyway, because it's a 3-3. So I'm going to leave Pendlehaven up to protect the Elf on their turn. They're just going to jump with War Marshal here. It doesn't really matter. I don't need the extra damage. It wasn't going to connect anyway. Okay, I currently have 1, 2, 3, 4, 8 poison damage available in Ink Moth Nexus. They have 3 mana in their pool. 4 mana. Four mana for a run belt horde master. Other goblins get plus one plus one. When this or another goblin dies, exit your top card. If it's a goblin creature, you may cast it until the end of your next turn. All right. Mediocre. And I need very little to just win the game off the top here. Any pump spell does it for the most part. Well, Dr. Blightington, I presume. I'm just going to fire up Ink Moth. Give it plus one plus two. It can't pyrokinesis here. Attack you for four poison. I'm not going to invigorate yet. That could still be a useful defense spell. Because I feel like I'm doing pretty good here. On just presenting threats. Bladed Agent get in. Ink Moth Nexus doesn't die to Fury. Because it's hiding in my mana base. I'm going to let them attack me for five here. It only went in for four. I was not going to trade with that Lord anyway. Yeah, they left up mana this time. Oh, Vines of Basswood, GG. Activate my Ink Moth. Plus one, plus two on the Ink Moth. And attack for lethal with protection back up. Invigorate. You can gain three life. And didn't even need the protection. We'll never know how sick Chill was there, but... Wow, this, this is a gnarly card against Turbo Mind Goblin deck. Sweet match. Let's go. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy, and old-school players. 
They now exclusively offer the Bosch & Roll community free, fully insured, and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets, and out-of-print sealed product. They upload new cards every Wednesday with weekly sale offers and reductions. Use my code BNR0723 to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over 341 euros, approximately $380. Scan the QR code or go to shop.341trading.com. On the draw for round two, I don't have any colored mana and no Lorien revealed in this hand. I gotta send it. Otherwise, it looks pretty exciting. Unfortunate. This is the same hand with fewer threats in it, but this one does have force. Going to five. Okay, a hand with cards in it. I will keep them. I'm going to put Caracas and Pendlehaven away. My opponent, Hawkage, says hi, YouTube. Everyone say hi, Hawkage. Ooh, a Blood Crypt. We got some Grixis Shadow in the chat. Hey, Lorian revealed. I am happy to see that. Now I can run this Tropical Island out, represent Days, represent Brainstorm, not just die to a wasteland. Feels good. Troll cycled for Bayou or Jund. Jund magic cards? Jund scam? Is that a thing? It's about to be. Okay. I can force of will this. They could BTFO me with a main deck, Veil vale of Summer. I'm going to force pitching days and hope this is good. This is where they play the second reanimate, and I wish I had days in my hand. End step. In the Lorian Revealed is a shuffle for my brainstorm, so I'm actually just not going to use that. I have a land drop. I didn't get wastelanded. I can brainstorm at any point and then shuffle with the Nexus, cycling the Lorian Revealed. I think that's the way to do this. Cycling another troll. Jund Scam is not really a known thing in the metagame, so I don't know what my opponent's going to be doing here specifically. But I do know that Jund and Grixis, Shadow and Classic Jund were basically the nightmare matchups in Modern for Infect for a while. Maybe I was supposed to brainstorm before Orcish Bowmaster was being represented. Okay, Grief Pitching Fiend Artisan. Wowie. Living our best life here. Brainstorm in response. If you have Bowmaster, you got me. Okay, uh, Glistener Elf Brainstorm on top of the deck. Do I want the Brainstorm or the Elf? Do I want any of this? All right, yeah, I'm just going to put the Elf on top, and I'm not going to shuffle, and they can have a Lorien revealed with Grief. Maybe they could even have two, and then I'll pass the turn with two Infect Threats in play. Zenith for two, uh-oh. Fiend Artisan is the choice. All right, now I have a, another choice, which is I could just... Send this Lorian revealed. Shuffle away that ink or that. Yeah, I don't think I'm actually going to get to use Glistener Elf with them having Fiend Artisan as a 4 4 in play already. Which means that I probably messed up the sequencing of that brains or that, that brainstorm. Like I could have left a different spread of things in my hand or at least drawn the brainstorm before I shuffle the deck. I probably beefed that up. But Glistener Elf for sure, not what I want. They didn't have a 4-4 four four in play when I made that decision. Got one poison on him. Goreboard. Reanimate Grief. Okay. The Reanimate is particularly funny in this matchup because there's no cost. It's just like, I, I don't care about your life total. You might have Death Shadow. You probably do with the Blood Crypt. But that is, uh, I certainly don't care about your life total. You won't get punished by reanimating a troll from me. So Invigorate is hilarious in in this matchup because you can pump your creature and obliterate their shadows by making them gain life. I hate firing up this unprotected 1-1 one, one multiple times into Orcish Bowmaster mana, but they didn't show me Bowmaster a turn ago. It's going to hope they don't have it continuously forever. There's also a thing you can do where you berserk your opponent's creature and you take twice as much damage in combat, but then it dies. If you think the game's going to go long and you need to take something off the board, that is a thing you can do. But I'm not going to be doing that because Berserk plus any pump spell makes this a lethal situation. Okay, holding back Fiend Artisan now. I'm certainly not going to Berserk a Grief, take six, and then they just Fiend Artisan it away. Venor and Explorer. Oh, you're doing this. Cool. We're Nick Fit. Oh, I do have one basic in my deck to search for. And they can tutor a one drop here. I'm pretty scared of black creature toolbox decks because every single creature in my deck is an X1 Phyrexian in the face of Plague Engineer. 
just the one coming in for me. And you get a one drop, another explorer. Okay, deck. It's time to find an invigorate and win the game. Noble Hierarch. Not quite the heater I was looking for. It is extra damage, though. Send two poison in there. They can Fiend Artisan for a four drop next turn, which I don't like. They can Fiend Artisan for a five drop now. They can also fetch into Death Shadow range, which they've been floating just above for a while. Ooh, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're just putting me to five. Alrighty, I'll take it. Okay, uh, I am all in here. I am just going to fetch for the thinning. Normally, I like to maximize for brainstorms and ponders, but we're kind of out of time here. Pop spell. No. That's a blocker that doesn't save me. I guess I could block, block, take one. Maybe this does save me. You get in there, big Enki. Doubling this only puts them to eight poison. I have lethal next turn. Oh, wait, grief. Grief has menace, so I'm going to one here. If I block with Ink Moth and Hierarch, I'm dead to anything that deals one damage to anything. If they fetch Dried Arbor here, I die. That's not a Dried Arbor. If Bowmaster does it, Lightning Bolt, Zenith for Questing Beast. There's a lot of stuff that could happen here. And what are these two cards that have been in their hand for the last hundred turns? I gotta assume they're reactive removal spells of some kind. Okay. Wake up, Ink Moth Nexus. Oh no. My... Force matchup, mana. Cycling Kogla and Yodaro, you sicko. Destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. Shuffle this in. Yep, you did it. Cool. That was awesome. I did not do what I needed to do there, which was get an attacker on the board. A meaningful attacker. Veil Summer looks pretty important here. Probably don't want to daze too much against the, the Nick Fit deck. Blusterstorm I and mean, Chill. No, they're mostly a black deck. Pongify, whatever. Blue Blast, whatever. Raftiger's Cage. That shuts down the homie. Also shuts down Reanimate. Yeah, I think I'm in for Graftiger's Cage. And lose a Lorien Revealed. Veil of Summers, Graftiger's Cages. Deck mostly together here. But last second. Oh, I don't think I got it. Uh, I tried to reach for Pongify right at the end there and don't think I got it. I'll keep this hand full of fire. Uh, I want the Pongify because I called out Plague Engineer, which specifically just shit cans this whole deck. If you can't remove it, you have to win with damage if you can't get that thing out of play. Like Noble Hierarch actual beatdown damage. All right, Glisten Arena. Make it happen, big guy. I have a force backup. Invigorate Pendlehaven backup threat. Pretty good spread here. But Jund. Jund are. That is the wedge of removal. Grief Pitching Orcish Bowmaster. This feels awful. And I think I just let this resolve, though. Yuck. Do they want the Force or the Invigorate? I have a suspicion they'll end up getting both here. If they take Force, then Reanimate, they get Invigorate too. They could take Invigorate, then just Lightning Bolt and dare me to Force it. It's a million for one myself. A Swamp. Okay, they're passing with their Swamp up. Swamp casts Fatal Push. Ooh, that was a good follow-up. I'm going to attack for just one and then play Blighted Agent. I think having a second threat in play so I can ignore at least one spot removal is more important than pushing one extra poison here. Orcish Bowmaster. Force of Will that. That kills my unblockable creature and then blocks my blockable one. Good draw. All right, Embig and off the top. Invigorate off the top. Pump spell. Pump spell. Brainstorm. We could still get there. I brainstorm into Invigorate. Pay me out. Hey! Ding ding. Put back Wasteland and Brainstorm, and then attack you with my creatures. Pump Glistener Elf. Pump Lighted Agent. I'm spreading the love around in case they have a snuff out. Just make sure they take at least five poison this turn. Cool. Multiple games won by YOLO brainstorming into the second Invigorate right when you needed to. On the draw now, somewhat like Surgical, I could bring in Sylvan Library and just try to thread past their discard interaction, but that runs right into Orcish Bowmaster in a way I'm not comfortable with. I think I do need the Pongify. 
maybe these cages are just too reactive, or at least as a two of. I don't think I like the Sylvan Library. Though you can Veil of Summer, Bowmaster triggers, and get ahead of them. Spend a turn drawing cards. I'm not trying to get too reactive here. Um, I think just poisoning them out is my best plan. First sighting of Embiggen. We got Embiggen and a threat and an Invigorate. This is a turn two Goldfish with Force Backup. I'm going to keep it. The Grief Scam deck's probably not going to let me Goldfish, but I'm going to try. Oh, it's not a turn two Goldfish because Embiggen costs mana. What a scam. All right, now it's a turn two Goldfish. LOL. Always had it. We haven't seen a Wasteland yet. I'd be a little surprised if they don't have any sort of land disruption. Kind of hoping they just left up Lightning Bolt there and then I didn't feed them. Okay, it's party time. Are we going to get a turn two kill with Force Backup here? Does Invigorate always, already beats damage-based interaction? Play my Forest. Go to Combat Attack. Oh, this isn't actually a Goldfish, though, because this is only nine poison, but they are dead next turn. I think I want to let them have this because I don't care about it because Invigorate just outmuscles it. And then I can sit on the other Invigorate for next turn. Or I could just get them to nine poison. Invigorate countering damage base removal is really good, though. Yeah, I'm just going to put them to five poison and keep the pump spells in my hand. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, four plus four plus one is not ten. Hardly seems fair, though. Invigin and Invigorate are both lethal. I'll be able to cast both next turn. I'll have to force of will a uh, hard removal spell, a fatal push. Ooh, played Basaju. That's fucking terrifying. Uh, on play to Plague Engineer. I like that. I can't force the Basaju. I can force the Plague Engineer. Now you're in trouble. They need like exactly snuff out here to win. Nice. Let's go. I'm gonna fetch before combat. Just make sure there's no tricks. That they can, like, kill my shit in response to a, a fetch. I don't know. Like, snuff out or bust here. I'm going to go with Embiggen for the style points. Make it Embigged. Six poison. We did it. Okay. Undefeated. Let's roll. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the play for round three against a Yorion strategy. I am going to keep. I've got ramp. I've got a bunch of pump spells, multiple threats. And I believe I lead on Noble Hierarch here. Just kind of take my time, get set up, make sure I don't lose to a Wasteland. And I can double Elf next turn and then threaten Lethal on the following. Rockrin Triome. You got it. Cool. I've got a Glistener Elf. Please force a will this, hell yeah. We got him, team. Listener Elf resolves. I don't think they're going to have damage based removal, but I still might want to brainstorm into a daze. So I'm not going to attack. And you generally don't force a will in your Swords to Plowshares deck if you don't have to. Okay. Uh, let's test the waters here. All right, we got a fetch and response. Samwise the Stout Hearted. This is a blocking creature that picks up that land. Okay. If I brainstorm into Daze, I win. Brainstorm. And Bacon Berserk. Oh, Berserk. That does it too. Okay. Put back Listener Elf and the backup in Bacon. Yeah, we're just sending it here. You get your Flooded Strand back. You get your shitty little blocker. Pump Listener Elf. Berserk Listener Elf. I don't even need the Embiggen here. Pew pew. 11 poison. We did it. That was through a force of will and a blocker on turn three. In fact, maybe. Okay. We're against some Sam Pile nonsense. Flusterstorm, probably. I think this is a Sylvan Library matchup. And I'm not going to go too deep here. Shave a couple dazes on the draw. Or a daze and a Lorien revealed. Yeah, I like this. Let's go. I don't like this hand with 
no colored mana in it. But like in this, shame though, this hand's a heater. Okay, I will run with this, although it doesn't have a threat, but I can figure that out later. I think I bought, um, it's actually tough because Wasteland could just Shadow Realm them if they don't expect it. I have two Wastelands in my deck. They're generally just part of a crop rotation package to clear shit like Maze of Ith, but sometimes you could just get them. I think I want to bottom the days, actually. Because I still have Force Blue card, and if I'm going to be Wastelanding, then I might need Lorien Revealed to be my next land. I think I just go for the cheese. You hang out Rock Run Triumph out on me on turn one. My hand needs some time to set up anyway. Splat. Savannah. Okay, that doesn't cast Ponder. It does cast Swords to Plowshares, though. Yo, Blighted Agent. Hello? Tropical Island Noble Hierarch. Get in there. Cycling lore and revealed. Okay. The Wasteland might have been aggro. Tutoring up a Volcanic Island, but knocking a Triumph out from under a five-color deck feels good. That one cast Ponder. You did it. You found a Ponder. I'm going to try really hard not to cycle this lore and reveal this game. Even if I'm going to miss a land drop, I would rather do that than give up my Force Blue card. Opponent chose to shuffle. Yeah. Oh, shit. Is this the play? They shuffled their Ponder. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to send Sylvan Library into here and put them under the, the pivot squeeze. Force of Negation pitching Force of Will. Force of Will pitching Lorien revealed. I can force back again if I need to. Wowie, force pitching Uro. Force pitching Bladed Agent. Yeah. The old four for four exchange where I resolve a draw engine at the end of it. We got the uff in the chat. UFF, I agree. That's the sound I make when I lose these fights too. Just prismatic ending me and don't worry about it. It's a ponder. Chose to shuffle. Hit their land. Uh oh. Two mana spells concern me here. It could be Leyline Binding, could be Prismatic Ending. Samwise, that gets your land back. Okay. And you hit your land drop, the ring tempts you. At least it's not up the beanstalk or a removal spell. I will almost certainly just be taking all three of these cards. Haven't even seen them yet. Keep, keep, play Ink Moth Nexus, and pass the turn. I respect the Sam. I understand that it has power and toughness, but I'm still trying to just party here. Brainstorm. I got a nice number of cantrips here, and we know they have a fetch land to help us brainstorm. Up the beanstalk. Yep, can't interact with that. Though it is really scary. This is how they outmuscle Sylvan Library, if it's going to happen. Fetching in response, which means they don't like the brainstorm cards. Mystic Sanctuary is not online, thanks to my early wasteland. I hope that matters. Anything to cut a tool out of their toolbox makes me happy. I could block pump here, but I just don't care. I'll take the two. Finds a fast wood and embiggen. Okay, so activate is one. Then I have invigorate or embiggen, invigorate. Yeah, this is lethal with vines or fluster up. Put brainstorm on top and I'll pay the four. I go to three, then I fetch, I go to two, and then I win. Okay. I'm a three. Fetch. I'm a two. Just don't bolt me. Drop. Wake up the Ink Moth Nexus. Two cards in hand. I don't know what they even could have that stops this. No blocks. I'm going to Embiggen and Invigen. We got the GGs in the chat. Poison. Oh, that was a quick match. Let's keep going. Still undefeated. Welcome to Taking the Initiative for Trans Lifeline, hosted by myself and a group of your favorite magic content creators. Trans Heart October is an annual drive where gamers and streamers from around the world work together to support Trans Lifeline. Trans Lifeline is the nation's only crisis and peer support hotline staffed by trans people for trans people. 2023 has been a year of unprecedented anti-trans legislation, violent rhetoric, and other attacks on the basic rights of some of our most vulnerable community members. Every $2 you donate during this campaign is a raffle entry. Every $500 collected overall adds another prize to the raffle. We have secret layers, cool stuff ink gift cards, full boxes, and almost 20 commander decks to give away. Use the link or QR code to get in the mix for great prizes while supporting an important cause. Entries are accepted October 16th through 20th, 2023. Donations must include name and address to be eligible for prizes. I'm on the play in round number four with uh, a blazing heater. This force currently unsupported, but 
I like having multiple threats and multiple pump spells to just keep blasting here. So anyway, I started blasting. Grief. Okay. You got me. Take a look. I have no responses. A blue grief deck. They took my Embiggen. I could Pendlehaven and just make sure that... Yeah, I'm going to Pendlehaven and make sure Glistener Elf doesn't die to a Bowmaster. That's my play here. I can think about Inkmoth Nexus later. Fetching in the end step for an island. Cycling a troll. Okie dokie. There is that uh, random weirdo Bajooka bug in my deck. I hope it pays out big here. Underground Sea. Representing the Bowmaster that I am trying to play around here. Oh cool. Force of Will makes it a lot easier. Going to attack. Here's the Bowmaster. I said Force of Will makes it easier and then just didn't even do it. Okay. They have to lose their Bowmaster and their army to beat this in combat. Which they appear happy to do. Which is fine because I just played a replacement threat. Put all your stuff in the graveyard. And I st I'm still pressuring and I still have Force of Will. In Wasteland is a card in their deck, but another part of the crop rotation package so you can rotate away cards that are about to die to Wasteland. Oh, Ursa Saga. A twist. I was not expecting this card. Oh, cool. We are Esper or Blue Black Breakfast. Oh, interesting. I could just get them with the crop rotation here. I'm actually going to force, because if they force back... Then the Bajuka Bog is the nuts. Alright. Maybe I got in the sauce there and I should have let them commit and then BTFO them. But they see the, the crop rotation. A Ink Moth. I am pumping it this time. It is safe from Bowmasters. More poison. Saga ticks up. If there's a Pithing Needle in their name, main deck and they can just grab it and name Nexus, that's a pain. I don't know what this... Scam breakfast deck actually is, or what's in it. Multiple tases here. Gonna just keep sending the squad. All we can do is watch their poison count go up and hope at some point it becomes lethal. I can double daze a bowmaster. Okay. Five poison. Bajuka bog still available to me. But the beats are gonna start coming back my way here. Just a float. I'm gonna fetch in response, although. If they have Pitting Needle, it's not naming Wooded Foothills here. Two Shukos. The race is on. Griefing me. Disappointing. Fixing a Troll of Kaza Doom. And this is going to take Crop Rotation. And then I might just lose. I could Crop Rot for a second Ink Moth in response. I think that's fine. That doesn't give away what I'm actually doing here. Like, I, it doesn't show them the Bajuka Bog. I am wondering if, like, three turns ago I was supposed to let them just commit and die to Bajuka Bog. Disappointing. Okay, show me your deck. I blew it. So maybe I was supposed to let that resolve because Double Daze just stops the Illusionist anyway. Can they afford to think about? I have certainly fucked this game. I had two spots to interact better than I actually did. We got Grief, Reanimates. Reanimates are cool because they're additional copies of Illusionist as well. Therapy confirmed. I see one Thassa's Oracle, three Narc Amoeba, Orcish Bowmaster. Yeah, there's no white cards here. We're just Demir Scam Breakfast. Pretty disappointed in myself for just fucking it on that uh, Bajuka Bog that I'm sure would have won the game. That was, that was loose. Okay. Veil of Summer comes in. Surgical Extraction comes in. Grafdigger's Cage, pretty solid. Boseju. Wilt, Force of Vigor. This is a weird matchup because I have a bunch of stuff I could bring in against both Plan A and Plan B. But also, I need a functional deck at the end of the day. What if I go no days, one Lorien revealed. I need all my attack stuff. Maybe Royal Treatment is kind of mid. Though it does beat Orcish Bowmasters in a really satisfying way. Do I need all of these things in? Like Spyglass naming Urza Saga shuts off that whole half of the deck. And then if I shut down the graveyard stuff, that's good. If I got all the Lorians and a Force of Will. Cutting Force of Will versus this deck might seem wild. And I'm not I haven't hit submit yet. I'm just talking it out. Like if they're a grief deck with tons of redundant reanimate effects, 
is force of will even actually a solution to what's going on here or do i need to shut it down harder with these graph diggers cage kind of things maybe the wilt is a step too far but without white in their deck they can't play nomads and they have to combo through shuko if i leave all my forces don't play the wilt i have force of vigor Baseju. though if i cut this many blue cards force of will doesn't even have that many things. There are like 13 total blue cards in my deck right now. That's not even a plan. What if I go Wilt, Sylvan Library, Force Out, Force Out, just zero force against Cephalid Breakfast? Is that is that the line? I can play Flusterstorm, Royal Treatment, and do it like this. This might be crazy, but their deck is crazy, and I'm taking bold experimental measures. Okay, uh, hand with no mana in it. Mulligan. Okay, I'll keep this. Bottom Caracas. Maybe I should be leaving Lorian Revealed in and cutting Caracas where it's not relevant. Grief Pitching Cabal Therapy. I'm just not going to respond to this because Crop Rotation both stuffs their combo and is a threat. And Brainstorm can move stuff around, but if Brainstorm is... If I cast Brainstorm first, they get to take my best card and I don't get good shuffles anyway. Okay, I can rotate for a Ink Moth Nexus here. I think that's better than Pajuka Bogging this one idiot. Okay, they have scammed me down to just an Ink Moth Nexus in play. Now I gotta draw some pump spells before they actually kill me. Ooh. Well, here's this one too. Adding to the board is better than one random poison here. This also keeps me from getting. Discard affected. Ponder. Go nuts. That means I'm not getting bow mastered this turn. Polluted Delta. Did not shuffle the ponder. I kind of want that royal roll. Stupid card. All right, Pendlehaven. Pendlehaven's good. That keeps Bladed Agent alive through bow masters. I'm not going to pump here. I'm just not going to lose my creature to bow master. It's a five turn clock if I don't pump. And it's a four turn clock if I do. I can also just pump later if I think they don't have it. Okay, Fatal Push. They did have an answer that didn't involve damage. Grief continues crushing. Okay, uh, the Brainstorm's pretty scary because I know they have Bowmaster in their deck. And now I have to hold back the Pendlehaven to make sure I don't lose my creature to a Bowmaster. Just keeping the steady pace of poison damage I think is more important than anything else right now. I'm not winning the race, but I have huge draws that can swing the race, and they don't. Cycling Troll. Underground Sea in play. Noble Hierarch, okay. I'm gonna fetch. Play Noble Hierarch. Activate Ink Moth Nexus. Unfortunately, because of the Pendle Haven, I don't have a spot to brainstorm here. But I think if they had the Bowmaster, they would have pinged the Hierarch before combat. That was just poison they didn't need to take. Okay, they don't have Bowmaster. All right, I can stop playing around that. There's a big turn right now for them to play a discard spell, though. This Brainstorm is precious. I go to five. I'm currently winning the race if I activate Pendlehaven proactively. It's just without drawing another card. And they could just Shuko Illusionist at any point. Ooh, big game. I'm going to brainstorm here. And if they do Bowmaster, I can veil it. Wilt Sylvan Library. Well, that sucks. I don't have a good shuffle here. If I put back Wilt Brainstorm, I can activate Ink Moth, attack, and then play Sylvan Library. It sees one new card next turn. But I'm not holding up Veil at any point. I could cycle the Wilt. That's not even good. All right, I'm going to put back Sylvan Library and Wilt, or Sylvan Library Brainstorm. Yeah, actually cycling. No, I'm, I'm activating Pendlehaven. I don't even have that. All right, never mind. It barely mattered what I put back because I'm just Pendlehavening anyway. This flips the race if they don't answer it. And you have to Pendlehaven before the Exalted Trigger because then it's not a 1-1 anymore. Sacrifice a non-token creature. Well, how about Noble Hierarch? That edict doesn't target, so there was no there was no action there. And now I'm actually in some trouble because I am not winning the race and I'm drawing Brainstorm. 
I have to hope they like thought sees me and I veil it and I draw a card deeper and then the brainstorm sees two new ones to win. That's how I get out of this. Game at two. Just hard cast grief. Put it in. Send it. Seth Little Illusionist. Gross. I mean, resolves, but gross. End step. I'm going to Veil of Summer here. I just need the redraw, and they did cast a blue spell. I'm all in at this point. Brainstorm. Give me the money. Force of Vigor, Sorcerer, Spyglass. Yep, no pump spells here. Yeah, I, I played too cautious, one turn too long with the Pendlehaven, and there's just... I put back Spyglass, Force of Vigor. I can brainstorm, and if my last card right now is Invigorate, I can still present a win. Nope. All right. I messed up game one, and then I played a little too cautious game two. Like, straight up just yeeted game one. I don't think they were ready for main deck crop rotation Bajuka Bog. And then this game, just a little behind the grief, and yeah, just killing that Noble Hierarch last turn with a non-targeted removal spell, so I couldn't veil it. GG's. On to the final round. You come here to level up at Magic. To level up as a software engineer, check out the new YouTube series Dev Better, hosted by the founder of 7 Factor Software and Magic player, Jeremy Duvall. 7 Factor's small teams of high-performing engineers build custom mobile apps, APIs, and highly scalable systems for Fortune 500 companies and ambitious startups with great ideas. If you'd like to hire 7 Factor, or maybe join their team, contact them through their website at 7factor.io. And don't forget to subscribe to 7 Factor's YouTube for every episode of Dev Better. I'm on the play in the final round. I'm going to keep my hand. It ramps, digs, and disrupts. I just need a threat. I've been pretty comfortable keeping hands like this. Maybe maybe I'm doing it wrong, but it's been working out so far. We're three and one, and I punted the loss, so having more cards in your hand is pretty busted. Drop, Hierarch, run it. Opponent's on six. A Mountain. And Aether Vial. Okay, that's not where I sent my Force of Will. Invigorate, okay. I'm going to brainstorm with a land. Blighted Agent and big in. What's up? Put back Caracas Wasteland. This is lethal next turn, even if I have to use an Invigorate to protect my Blighted Agent this turn from damage base removal. It's one, four, nine, ten. Mountain Vial is probably goblins. I've seen some weird painter decks that do this kind of thing with Agus the Soul Cauldron. That's fringe shit, though. They play Wasteland. Maybe I'm not supposed to reveal that and just win the game, but here comes Lethal. I'm going to use the card that costs mana first. Keep my most efficient stuff around. It would need main deck Pyrokinesis to even contest this. Like, I, I don't even know what they could have here. Gain three life. Cool. It'll turn three goldfish. Kept a hand without a threat, no problem. Another goblin deck... With Aether Vial means it's probably not Stompy style. Chill, Blue Blast. I think I want Besaju over Bajuka Bog. I do like that kind of free change in the mana base. And then Days probably mid. And I'm going to run it like this until they tell me otherwise. Or maybe I want Sorcery Spyglass over another Days. If they're classic goblins, that's a Wasteland deck. And I have Ink Moth Nexes. What I don't have is mana to cast my spells. Mulligan this one. Fuck yeah. Keep bottom of the Caracas. It's basically the same hand I kept last game. It's got ramp, it's got pump. Opponent oh, appears to have Chalice of the Void. Cool. Well, I brought in the Besaju at least. They tricked me with the, the pump zone or the, uh, the, the Aether Vial. Generally, we don't see Aether Vial in decks that have Chalice of the Void also, but sure. Live your best life. And yeah, Goblin Matron doing a little bit of a tutor here. Grabbing a Muxus. Fetch for a tropical island and spyglass. This seems a little too little. Uh, yep, the old red elemental blast. Chalice of the Void combo. There's nothing meaningful to disrupt here. I guess I just say wasteland in case. And pass the turn and probably die. Here's the goblin. I need this to low roll. I need a four. Yeah. Four does not cast Muxus. Trash Master. Well, that was a solid find. That also kills Ink Moth Nexus because it's an artifact. Yeah, I need an opponent to brick there, and they half bricked, but they drew a good card. We could save time and just go to the next one. I'm not getting through the Trash Master. Force of Vigor, suddenly interested in that. 
I was not expecting Chalice of the Void and Ancient Tomb after seeing Mountain, Aether Vile, Game 1. People are experimenting with the shell. It's all good. But annoying to have to keep track of all of it. I'm on the play now where Days is better. Probably still not good for the matchup. Force of Vigor. Do I want this Wilt? Yeah, Source of Spyglass could go out. Now that I know they're stompier, maybe I don't expect Wasteland now. Adjust to changing information. Keep. I got the chill, the one of chill. Are we going to beat goblins with a chill twice in one league? Stay tuned to find out. I am in pretty hard on these noble hierarchs, though. No second land. The consideration of playing Glistener Elf first to get under Chalice and still be doing stuff was on my mind, but I don't think we actually need to play like that. Yeah, goblin lackey. Hate that for me. Ingmon Nexus, love that for me. I'm going to play Glistener Elf and chill. I'm going to play Chill first, though. Chill, Glistener Elf. I'm going to block and Invigorate. That's my plan. Using the Invigorate here kind of sucks, but we have to play Control versus the Goblin Lackey. And if they were all in on a Lackey spam strat, then hopefully the Chill will get them the hell out of my game. They could go land 2-mana Fury here. That didn't happen. Now I have Force Blue card back up. Noble Hierarch. No reason to wake up the Ink Moth because they're showing me face-up answer to that, and I do more damage with an Exalted attack than with two attacks. Three mana for a one-drop. It's a good one-drop, though. These Force of Wills are harsh in my vibe. Though they did tap out of Wasteland for the turn, which means I can attack and leave back my blocker that actually beats Goblin Lackey in combat. And I think I want to cycle this Lorien and just hit a land drop. Force of Will, not a great card against the cavern. Another cavern. Uh-oh. They've done a good job hitting their land drops. I guess I have to hope they need the Wasteland to cast spells. Well, that's bad. Okay, this can't be countered. Takes out the Ink Moth. If I block Goblin Lackey here, I'm only attacking for two. I think I have to block. Any pump spell wins the game. Come on, deck. Don't be, don't be cheesy now. Don't scum a bro. Pump spell. All right. Backup threat. I'll take it. Though it's not really a backup threat. Because I have to block the lackey if I think that's how I lose the game. I think what I'm going to do here is send two poison now. And play the blighted agent. Then maybe I just let lackey hit me. Because this wasteland just has me checkmated. If... If I hold up Hierarch to block, maybe I just got to shrug and hope it's not so bad. Or maybe they'll tap out of the Wasteland pre-combat again. I don't know. We'll see. This is going to come down to the wire regardless. My inability to draw pump spells. <laughs> Listen to me saying that like I haven't brainstormed into exactly Invigorate multiple times this league. Shut up. The opponent is at 8, dead on board to either of these Infect creatures, and... I believe my play is just let Lackey hit me and hope I'm not dead. Because I don't think it's getting better under this wasteland. My opponent did house somehow construct a goblin deck that has Aether Vial and Wasteland and Ancient Tomb Chalice of the Void in it. They are doing everything. And I'm just going to say no blocks and hope that my unblockable creature can carry the day. Goblin Matron. Okay. I mean, that's effective. If there's a Gem Palm Incinerator in their list, that beats the chill. That's not Muxus, though. I'm pretty happy about that. Munitions Expert. Okay. I, think, I was about to say they can't play that and Wasteland, but guess what? They fucking can, because they have a land drop, too. How about the Rebladed Agenting? Okay, I'm going to wake up the squad here. I'm going to make them do everything. And then I'm going to play the other Bladed Agent and put them back in check. Here's the Expert. Still can't counter it. Cavern of Souls, messed up card. Blighted Agent is Deadzo's. You know what would have been cool? Any pump spell. Okay, that's handled. And then Blighted Agent. Right back in there. Pass the turn again. Hope for the best. We've seen Pyroblast. Wow! They just didn't have it after all that. Whoa, that was wild. Okay, a 4-1 league where I punted a game in my loss. That's a pretty... Good showing for Infect. I'm not an Infect expert, so I don't know 
if this is the correct spread of Vines of Basswood, Royal Treatment, Embiggen, All as Two Ofs, Berserk a Two Of. I'll trust the experts for that. Maybe you don't need Bajuka Bog in the main deck. Although, I didn't bother to use it at the time, it would have been great. You could focus your mana a little more and like put Caracas Bajuka Bog in the sideboard, but I guess you're losing to faster combo decks. So if if you have room to build it into the main, you can win some points there. Lorien Revealed was like fine, I guess. It was a blue card for force a lot, and I did cycle it a lot, so it did the two things it was supposed to do, and then I boarded it out a lot. Never drew or played Royal Treatment, which is a shame because that card looked like it was going to be a lot of fun. But perfectly successful, solid league. I am happy with this deck and its performance, and if you like shopping poison, seems like it's got a lot of new toys. I am concerned about Orcish Bowmaster in the format in your deck full of X1s. I am concerned about Orcish Bowmaster's second order consequence of making black a good color. And if you're in black, you get Plague Engineer. So Bowmaster kind of gets you on the face and on the uh, and on the tails, heads and tails. It's getting you. And the Bowmaster matchup is the one that I lost. So, I mean, count that up. Decide if you want to be that soft to a card that prevalent. But we played against a bunch of decks that didn't have it, and they just freaking died. Feels good, man. Heinz, thanks for sharing the opportunity to play this deck. Magic players of the internet, thanks for providing me this deck. It hasn't been on my radar in quite some time, but I saw it did well in a tournament and had to run it. Everyone, thanks for watching. Be sure to support the Taking the Initiative for Trans Lifeline drive that's running right now. Links are in the video description. Like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the Patreon. Check out all the stuff, and I'll see you next time.